Hello friends, Namaskar. As an assessee, when you are going to file your ITR, a very important question which you may be facing is as to when you are supposed to report your assets and liabilities in the ITR. And if you are supposed to report such assets and liabilities in the ITR, that is the ITR form or I may say income tax return form, then how and what value should be reported in the ITR. Through this video, I see Anu Bhatia going to elaborate you this very important concept for the benefit of assessees at large. My dear friends, the first question which I am taking up with you that who is liable to report? That is, I mean to say that who is liable to report the assets and liabilities in his or her return and mainly I am talking here for individual and HF. So my first point is any person having total income above rupees 50 lakh is required to report assets and liabilities in the ITR. A very important point to be noted my dear friends that if you are not a businessman or a professional and you are a salaried paid person then you are not at all liable to report your assets and liabilities in ITR till your total income exceeds 50 lakh and I repeat till your total income exceeds 50 lakh I am not saying gross total income. So unless your total income exceeds 50 lakh you are not supposed to report in your ITR the situation or the position of your assets and liability. Secondly if you are a businessman or a profession and you are offering real income in ITR 3 then you are supposed to report your business assets and liabilities in the ITR 3 form. So we will discuss in detail that okay if you are supposed to report then how you are supposed to report those assets and their values in the ITR form. Now let me discuss a very important point which is pertaining to the salaried paid employees that if you are an employee then how you are going to report your assets and liabilities in the ITR form. Let me tell you a very important point my dear friends as I elaborated in beginning also that as a salaried paid employee you are required to report assets and liabilities in the ITR form in form of ITR 2 when your total income exceeds 50 lakh. So if your total income is not exceeding 50 lakh you are least worried about reporting assets and liabilities in the ITR when I am assuming you are a salaried paid person. But if your total income exceeds rupees 50 lakh then how you are going to report then this schedule AL which is given in ITR 2 is to be filled up. And please understand the terminology used here is assets and liabilities at the end of the year. Which assets and liabilities? Your personal assets and liabilities. Assets and liabilities at the end of the year. At the end of the year means that any asset held on 1st of April or in the mid of the year is irrelevant. What is held on the last date of the financial year should be reported. So even if at the time of filing return you have sold that asset, it is irrelevant. If it was there as on 31st of March in your end, you are supposed to report or include that asset in ITR. Assets and liabilities at the end of the year applicable in case where total income exceeds rupees 50 lakh. So when your total income is exceeding 50 lakh as on 31st of March, what were the asset? Their value should be reported in schedule AL assuming that your total income was exceeding 50 lakh. Now details of immovable property here in first part part A you have to report that you are holding a land you are holding a building you are holding a flat the address of the relevant property the pin code there is no date of acquisition being asked for but point to be mentioned here very importantly is amount of cost in rupees so you are supposed to mention the cost suppose you have acquired the asset from your predecessor by way of will or by way of gift then you can fill up that value as a cost. You need not to fill up the stamp duty value. Then comes the turn of mobile property. In mobile property you are supposed to declare the jewelry bullion, archaeological collection, drawing, painting, sculptures, work of art and what you are supposed to report for them? Amount of cost in rupee. Vehicle, yacht, boat, aircraft. The depreciated value is irrelevant. What was the cost of acquisition? Say for example you are owner of a car then you are supposed to report the cost of that car in this particular portion. Similarly, you may have financial asset like bank including deposit. So you are supposed to report the cost. The cost I can't report here. I can report here what is the balance as on 31st of March in form of saving bank, in form of current bank, in form of RD, FD, etc. That is fixed deposit and recurring deposit balances. Shares and securities. This is a very challenging point because Knowing the cost of share and security is sometimes a tedious task when you are frequently buying and selling. So it is better that you can 
rather than reporting cost you can report the nsdl statement value as on 31st of march or any other demet holding statement value as on 31st of march yet that is not a right proposition the right proposition as per law is cost but if you can't ascertain the cost then you can at least give the value of the securities and here the securities in my opinion would include share debenture bond mutual fund etc similarly for insurance policies my dear friend i would suggest that you should give the amount which you have invested till date in the various insurance policies which is your cost loans and advances if any given by you and cash in hand which is in your hand as on 31st of march should be reported here further if you are reporting any assets and for acquiring those assets any liabilities are there then those liabilities should be given here of say for example to acquire a property you took a loan for acquiring a car you took a loan those outstanding values of the loan should be reported by you here in this particular schedule that is schedule a so if i move further from salaried paid person to the businessman or to a professional then the question comes how to report the assets and liabilities in the case of a businessman or a professional now here two points i would like to mention one it is to be seen whether you are offering income under presumptive taxation that is you are offering income under 44 ad 44 ada or 44 ae or you are offering real income from business or profession this is a very important point to be distinguished by a businessman from the point of view of thinking of that which assets which liabilities to be shown and we will also be discussing that how their value to be shown in the balance sheet or how their value to be shown in the itr now let me first take up the case of a person who is into business or profession and who is offering income under presumptive taxation mind you my dear friends if you are offering income under the presumptive taxation scheme then prima facie you are not supposed to give the balance sheet that is assets and liabilities in the itr but there are two scenarios one as an 44 ad a or 44 ada income offerer person you are supposed to report at least following financial particulars of your business please read it very carefully financial particulars of the business and which date as on 31st of march what you are supposed to report you are supposed to report two asset two things total capital and liabilities and total assets in capital and liabilities you are supposed to report what is your capital secured loan unsecured loan advances sundry creditor and other liabilities and the assets you are supposed to report fixed asset now law has not mentioned cost or wdv so in my opinion it can be any one of them because the law is not specifying itr form is not specifying inventories should certainly be your cost sundry debtors balance with the bank cash in hand loan and advances other assets so these are the values which you can report in the itr form that is itr form 4 this is relevant when your total income is not exceeding 50 lakh now suppose if your total income exceeds rupees 50 lakh and you are offering income under presumptive taxation then what will happen that i'll discuss further so as i said that a question is if you are offering income under presumptive taxation but total income is greater than rupees 50 lakh then my dear friends what will happen then a person like me would suggest that in such a case apart from giving financial particulars which i have discussed with you you are also supposed to fill up the schedule a and in that case two things will happen to you first thing is that as a 44 ad or ada or ae person you are supposed to give the financial particular of the relevant business or profession and you are also supposed to fill up the schedule al and there is no schedule al included in itr4 then you have to move from itr4 to itr3 and please mind you my dear friend while you are filing itr3 it's not that you can't claim the presumptive taxation benefit you can go into presumptive taxation but since from total income angle that is your total income and mind you my dear friends the total income concept is a larger concept than only business or profession income you may have presumptive taxation income of rupees 10 lakh but your total income may be exceeding 50 lakh then in that case you are supposed to fill up the schedule al you are supposed to fill up itr3 and you are supposed to give the financial particulars of itr4 kind of and you are also supposed to give 
the personal assets and liabilities related detail which i have discussed in the case of salaried paid person in itr 3e1 so a very important understanding from the point of view of businessman or professional offering 44 ad or ad or ae but their total income is exceeding 50 lakh now let me take up the case of a person who is offering actual income from business or profession that is who is not offering presumptive taxation income who is offering the actual income in that case what will happen if your total income does not exceed rupees 50 lakh i am assuming you are a businessman or a professional you are offering actual income your total income is not exceeding 50 lakh then only assets and liabilities of the business should be reported very important point sir you are a businessman or a professional your total income is not exceeding 50 lakh you are supposed to report only business assets and liabilities in the itr but if i assume that you are offering actual income from business or profession and your total income is exceeding 50 lakh then in the balance sheet portion of the itr form you are supposed to give the business balance sheet business related assets and liabilities but you are also supposed to give the detail of your personal asset in schedule al separately so this is a very important understanding which we can develop with the help of this video now let me have a quick discussion on this portion that when you are a businessman or a professional and you are not availing the benefit of presumptive taxation you are offering actual income then you are supposed to fill up the balance sheet in your itr 3 form then i will say i will repeat in such balance sheet not personal assets and personal liabilities only business assets and liabilities should be reported now which values are to be reported maybe that some of them may be applicable to you all of them may be applicable to you i am quickly discussing them and the value as on 31st of day of march would be applicable what are the values proprietor's capital reserves and surplus and total proprietary fund any loans which are taken by you in form of secured loan or in form of unsecured loan should be filled up so your capital enhanced by the reserves and your loans and advances which you have availed may be which are secured or unsecured in the business they are to be reported in this balance sheet so the total of these two becomes sources of fund against these sources of fund you have to show the fixed asset these fixed asset are in form of gross asset that is the total cost depreciation which you have claimed till date net block any work in progress where you have any assets which is under construction further investment in form of long term investment i will again repeat only business investment or which may be in the form of short term investment should be reported that is how the total investment value would be reflecting there further the current assets loans and advances to be reported the current asset in form of inventory which would include a store raw material stock in progress stock in process finished goods traded value further sundry debtors cash and bank balance of the business cash in hand bank balance as on 31st of march and other current assets would be required to be reported there this total would form part of total current assets against that in addition to the current asset you may have given certain loan and advances those loan and advances which you have given or the balances with the authorities like a refund which you are claiming from gst or income tax department could be shown here out of these total current assets loan and advances you will be claiming uh, reducing here the liabilities liabilities may be in form of sundry creditor then liability for leased asset in interest accrued on above interest accrued but not due similarly any provision of income tax provision for leave and cashment etc would be required to be disclosed here and these all liabilities would be pertaining to business only so total current asset minus total current liability would be treated to be net current asset and i am continuously repeating that only business assets and liabilities are required to be reported here finally if any deferred tax asset or any pnl debit balance is there profit and loss account debit balance means loss is there that would be reported and your total application of funds would reflect there at the end my dear friends i would again repeat that as a salaried paid person you are required to report your personal assets and liabilities only when your total income exceeds 50 lakh as a businessman person it would depend whether your total income is exceeding 50 lakh one factor and whether you are offering income under presumptive taxation or you are offering real income my suggestion to a businessman or to a professional would be 
when your total income exceeds 50 lakh you are supposed to offer both in a real income scenario of a businessman profession with 50 lakh plus income you are supposed to report your schedule of assets and liabilities as well as business assets and liabilities and when you are offering income under presumptive taxation unless your total income exceeds rupees 50 lakh you are not supposed to give the details of assets and liabilities except the financial particulars which i have discussed with you in this video however if your total income as a presumptive taxation person exceeds 50 lakh you are supposed to report the financial particulars of business as well as the personal assets and liabilities in itr i hope my dear friends the content of this video you will find that useful to your itr filing when you are covered under this important aspect of disclosing assets and liabilities in the itr Thank you very much for listening to me so patiently. Wishing you all the best. Jai.